Welcome back. You're still watching Morning Rush on Metro Television. We are live on DSTV channel 277, live on Facebook and YouTube is Metro TV Ghana. Don't forget to follow us on Instagram, Metro TV underscore G. Today is the 8th of March and like I stated earlier, today is International Women's Day. A day to acknowledge and celebrate thriving women in different endeavors, be it political, social and culture. And this morning... Um, PPAG, that's Planned Parenthood Association um, and Oxfam TV presents Power to Choose Reducing Gender Inequality, a tax for all. And this morning we have Miss Nedu Irajua Adiko, who is the project officer for Planned Parenthood Association of Ghana, and also Fauzia to Ab Abdul Rahman, who is also the project coordinator for Oxfam Power to Choose uh, project coordinator good morning women i wouldn't say ladies today's international <laughs> women's day so good morning women good morning, good morning. how are you we are fine okay mm. the, today's a very very special day before we start with the whole conversation when days like this come for you as a woman what does it mean to you okay so for me is is another opportunity to celebrate my uniqueness mm -hmm. Uh, as a woman or a reminder to know how strong I am, mm -hmm. how despite all odds in certain mm -hmm. time for me to keep thriving yeah. and do the sisterhood proud. <laughs> <laughs> for mm -hmm. too, um, mm -hmm. let's just dive into the conversation. What makes um, inequality, gender inequality, a social phenomenon which needs to be discussed on days like this? What really makes it something we need to address? Yeah, so thank you very much. Yeah, so gender inequality is, uh, is part of us and is a very big challenge that we need to look at as um, a society, as a country. Mm -hmm. And wherever you find yourself, you need to look at gender inequality as a, a thing that we all have to fight against. The reason being that um, women constitute more than 50% of the population. And um, based on the fact that women have a lot of role to play, yeah. not only um, at the family level, but even in our societies and beyond, we need to um, make sure that women are, are empowered to be able to occupy the spaces they need to occupy, to be able to fulfill the, the role they are expected to play. Yeah. Women have been neglected for a very long time. Even though Ghana is a lot, and the, the world, to say, and all countries are doing their best to ensure to remove this inequality, but very little has been achieved yeah. about that. And that is what calls for concern, mm -hmm. because the more we do what we, want, we are doing to bridge the gap, the more the gap keeps um, widening. widening yeah. And that is where, why I think that it is, we shouldn't leave it to only the women. But all and Sandra, all uh, stakeholders should embrace it and fight against inequality yeah. to ensure that women are given the opportunities they deserve in our societies. Okay, let, let's start from the top. What are some of the causes of these gender inequalities that we face day in, day out? Okay, so uh, basically every day in a woman's life, mm -hmm. uh, there are level of inequalities that they face. When we say inequalities, more of like some biases and stereotypes yeah. that a woman face. And these challenges span from uh, across all the life domains. Mm -hmm. So a human being, we go to social development, we go to even cognitive mm -hmm. and uh, more of like uh, reproductive health development. And yeah. all these places, women face some level of biases or stereotypes. Yeah. And one of the key places that women face most of the biases is reproductive health. And uh, from the perspective of PPAG or what we do, uh, some of the biases that come with uh, reproductive health is uh, we talk about gender-based violence, where women are discriminated purely because of socially ascribed rules. Uh, women are perceived to be nurturers, like that is in the end of what society has perceived. So you find that uh, uh, women are, are encouraged or are seen to be more caring and down to it and all that. So if you get a woman who is willing to be assertive yeah. and stand up for herself, you are doing too much, you get True. name calling, the harassment and all that. You also have women that are, are raped, are defiled, 
and uh, verbally abused, all forms of abuse meted against yeah. them, and that is also one. And when we come to the bit about family planning or even the power to choose contraceptive or and all that, there's also some level of, uh, of discrimination there because that kind of authority society has always a man that makes decisions. But in terms of family discussion, it should be a collective effort, but largely it should rely on the woman. That's what we talk about body autonomy. So you have some women who uh, wish to use a contraceptive, or not even necessarily contra, like mm -hmm. plan their best, space their children, but for some reason they don't have spousal support to do that. Mm -hmm. And all this go a long way to affect their development. And I always say that these issues that are meted out with women doesn't only restrict to women. It affects the family, even yeah. the men. If we are going to the nitty gritties, if a woman is uh, in the family setting, is not able to abuse or economically she's not there. Mm -hmm. Yes, if we are leaning towards traditionally the roles of women to take care of the family, she's not in the position, she doesn't have enough love to give yeah. love. And yeah. you need to be full of yourself before you can even dispense to sure. the family. So I will see that these challenges, though women are the end that they face, the consequences relies on not only the woman, yeah. but the family suffers, or not really on you, the man suffer, suffer, and also society or government suffer. suffer. So yeah. from my perspective, and also another bit about the economic bit of it, some women don't have empowerment or livelihood skills, so they are succumbed to transactional mm -hmm. sex. Yeah. And even when it comes to leadership and governance, you have uh, women like not actively involved. I bet to say, uh, well, why is it that in terms of our party system, mm -hmm. like women are limited, maybe women commissioner and all that in party yeah. system, but uh, well, they are doing well, there are some women there, but. But we, we can do more, more yeah. what we call positive discrimination. Yeah. So women like should be allowed to even uh, add uh, the other higher position that True. are knowingly yeah. reserved for men, men. but not constitutional or something. Party should even encourage women to take that because I'm of the belief that before we achieve that equity balance or women in power, it starts from the party system. Yeah. So once we have more women up there, they can win primaries, become member of parliament, and who sure. knows, cannot be blessed with a female president. Yeah. <laughs> Amen yeah. to that. Yeah. I mean, even we saw the changes when we had a, a female EC, yeah. a commissioner for the election. That's yeah. a big deal. That yeah. was a big step. Yeah. But then Fauzia mentioned something like, not only the women that are involved, we need exactly. people to come on board, the yeah. government, the stakeholders, exactly. also and the society. In as much as we talk about gender inequality and it's more focused on women, yeah. how do we make sure the men are on board? How do we even make sure that the women mm -hmm. also take up a role to make sure that all these things we keep talking about are addressed to the little bit of everything? Yeah, so for me, let me start from the very basic, from mm -hmm. the family level. Yeah. Right, so at the family level, we need the men will have to, first of all, see the women as our partners in development and not just homemakers. Yeah. So once they see that um, these women are their partners, mm -hmm. they will do their best to share in the household chores. That takes a chunk of the woman's time, um, preventing her from engaging in uh, economic yeah. ventures. And that will also cascade to the children they, 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 they bring up. So in sharing the chores at home, they will share it equally between mm -hmm. the boy and the girl. And once that happens, both children will have enough time to be able to study yeah. and to proceed in, uh, in their education. Moving from the family, we can come to the community level. We have um, the, uh, our custodians, the custodians of our culture who, who are our chiefs. Mm -hmm. They hold the key to our culture. Right? And most of these things that we are, looking, we are talking about are basically and uh, sociocultural practices, yeah. that leads to that. And they have the power to be able to change some of the cultural practices that uh, impedes on women's uh, empowerment. When they also come on board, try to, I mean, re change some of these practices. Yeah. And that will affect the entire uh, community or the, the society. Then it will build on to the national level. Mm -hmm. Government will also put in place some policies and programs, like uh, Naldo mentioned, um, positive discrimination. Yeah. We, 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 we have this, um, um, what, uh, what's the name? This policy, the bill that we have put in parliament, 
but for over 20 years that uh, it has been there yeah just because over 90 percent of our legislatures are men I mean, yeah. and so they don't see it as a mandate yeah. to i mean uh, push it through to and pass it into a law and so from the national level government should try to see to put in place some of the policy the policies are there yeah we have we even have a gender policy in place with the theme uh, mainstreaming gender equality and women mm -hmm. empowerment in Ghana's developmental efforts. Yeah. If we are mainstreaming gender in, gender equality in our and this uh, policy touches on all aspects of the economy, health, education, e uh, economic activities, jobs, uh, official jobs, and so on. But the problem is the implementation mm -hmm. of those policies. Yeah. So if you have a policy in place that, that says that both men and women should be given equal opportunity to employment, and yet you don't do serious gender analysis yeah. of your programs and, and, and activities to see how it affects the two mm -hmm. genders. For instance, a, a woman is invited to come for an interview right from the northern region to, to Accra. The first call she had, she was prepared to be taken to the theater for a surgery to be delivered of a set of things, mm. right? So they told her, okay, so if that is the case, well, we'll move you to another badge. Mm -hmm. Two weeks after that, she was invited. You knew the position in which she was at that yeah. time. So there was a need for them to create an environment conducive for her to be able to go through the interview. Exactly. But they still insisted her on her traveling all the way from Tamil to Accra for face-to-face -face interview. Mm -hmm. She had a set of twins. She was still nursing her uh, CS because she went through CS. Mm -hmm. And two weeks down the line, she had to travel all the way. But we have other means of interview. But 2020 opened our eyes to Zoom mm -hmm. and so, so many other have, things. That is what I'm talking We have so many mm -hmm. other platforms. Even phone interviews yes. are done. Yeah. We have Zoom interviews. We have Teams interviews. We could do virtual interviews for them. Exactly. But they had to allow the lady to move all the way from Tamil to Accra, Accra. with the set of twins to, to attend the face-to-face -face interview. So what I'm saying is that government, even the government has done something, mm -hmm. right? I wouldn't say it is enough. We have uh, the, the gender policy that I talked yeah. about. We have the Ministry of Gender and Children's uh, and Social Protection mm -hmm. and so on. We have those two and so on. But the implementation, mm -hmm. government should do well to ensure that one that's mainstreaming gender, then it means that they have to do proper gender analysis yes. of all their programs yeah. and activities to see how it affects women before they implement that, so that they can put mechanisms in place to check yeah. those, those things. I, I was tempted to ask how, in all this, how Ghana has been able to address it, but um, I would say you've already answered <laughs> it. So let's move on to what PPAG um, is doing to commemorate this year's International Women's Day. Let's talk about the theme yeah. and how uh, it aligns to, to this particular day. Yeah. Mm, okay. Uh, so uh, our theme, it fits into the general that uh, today mark international mm -hmm. means they, we are embracing equity. But for us, we are having a, a gender dialogue mm -hmm. or a seminar at 11 a.m. today. At, uh, we have a founder center, a venue closer to our head office. Okay. To uncover the issues, we have selected uh, uh, personalities, mm -hmm. women and men, to uh, to have this dialogue yeah. and for us this day really fits into what we do we have we have acknowledged that yes it's international but to address the issues that affect women it should be everybody's responsibility especially uh, yes i we want to acknowledge that yes men uh, uh, experience uh, inequality and some levels of discrimination but uh, statistics or evidence based on women are more at the receiving end, end. Yeah. so we we and we want the men as allies so for us we are engaging men and boys too and i think now even in the sense of improving uh, gender inequalities we are leaning towards what we call gender transformative approach mm -hmm. where uh, engaging men and boys is a very critical bit sure. of it yeah. so we engage them as allies as partners because if they come on board or there's a buying for them, it makes the work easier. Imagine you want to promote uptake of family planning. If you solely engage the woman, we have mentioned hindrance from spouses, uh, 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 the men not in support of it. But yeah. if we bring the men on board, make them see the benefit 
of their wives pacing their bed, the good will do mm -hmm. for their children or their economy. They will even be supporters and put that in there. So that is what we are doing. And just to touch on our uh, collaboration mm -hmm. with Oxfam. So yeah. Uh, Oxfam supports us to implement the Power to Choose project, mm -hmm. and the project mainly target adolescent girls. Okay. Uh -huh, and we recruit men as champions. So in addressing, we are addressing these inequalities that affect women and girls, especially adolescents that between 10 to 24 mm -hmm. at the grassroots levels. Because sometimes people are not privy to what happens in the rural areas. True. And just to uh, go further, when we say equity goes a bit further than equality that even among women mm -hmm. there are some women that still need more office triple or double bedding yeah. of these inequalities like rural women mm -hmm. pregnant teens uh, women and girls with disability and that is what we are about we go to to the fathers to the marginalized we are leaving nobody behind mm -hmm. so that uh, once we touch base at the community level Having that uh, partnership with community leaders, the parents, we're able to in, uh, engage them properly to see, first of all, identify all these things because some of them even are going through these biases. They don't even know that is it. Yeah. I, I, like, they have no idea. They have no idea that, oh, uh, what is being meted out to me? My husband is always saying um, I'm useless, mentioning the three words against me. Yeah. It's not an abuse. People think abuse is just, oh, you have been Between slapped. You, physical and, uh, uh, abuse. Yeah. Physical, but emotional yeah. abuse, verbal abuse. So we even empower them to recognize and even further we empower them to report the mm -hmm. abuse because yeah then there's this uh, uh war of endurance that women are, are taught to to have mm -hmm. also oh i can deal with the pain oh it will get better for my children's sake but is this children that you are fighting for you you may this abuse may be harm you may die and leave, leave the, them. Ch yeah. the children so we touch at these grassroots levels for the young people that may don't have a uh, livelihood empowerment mm -hmm. to the support of Oxfam on the project. We're able to give them livelihood skills training of their choice. Yeah. So be it beading, baking, anything they're interested in, we support Addressing. them. Addressing, yeah. support them. Then they can be able to f uh, have something for themselves and they will not be subjected to transactional exactly. sex. Exactly. Uh, even sanitary pad, uh, girls are, uh, which for me, that is a whole different issue. Topic altogether. Yeah, we'll say it. Part is seen <laughs> as a luxury. Yes. And um, wow, this mm, is a This is a necessity. Exactly. I, 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 I'm, mm -hmm. I'm tempted to find to understand what we mean by luxury. luxury. Exactly. How yes. is sanitary mm. part a luxury. luxury? Because I wonder how if we can wake up uh, a month and tell our womb and uterus and over <laughs> that today don't menstruate. <laughs> oh, you know, I don't have money. So, so yeah. yeah, so it, most girls end up uh, trying to pay for their daily mm -hmm. needs and mm -hmm. in the rural setting the most girls are being pushed to early sex and yeah. all that for a pack of indomie for a pack of indomie like a uh, cattle boys or oh, and or basic phone mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. all that mm -hmm. so for us we are reaching the fathers and the marginalized to make sure that we we all come together all women are given equal opportunities yeah. those who have double burden in our own small way, empower them True. That is mainly so that uh, we can have a gender equal yeah. world. So the, the seminar is today? Yes, today. From 11 a.m. Yes. to? Uh, more of it's going to be like a three hour, two three hour hours. event. Okay. And uh, it will be streamed on our social media platforms. Okay. And okay. we have a Zoom link that mm -hmm. you can, if you visit PPAG on uh, Instagram, Facebook, mm -hmm. or our, our socials, can get the Zoom link. Okay. Want to encourage you to join mm -hmm. uh, so that we share this conversation and yeah. the discourse and so that we can help Ghana and beyond mm -hmm. move to a, a, attaining all the dream we want. We want to see every girl in school, pregnant, adolescent, who yeah. will give birth and they will go back to school so that every young girl out there potential is fulfilled. I'm a benefit of the policies that have been done so far, all the advocacy people have done before me. Mm -hmm. If it wasn't for Kujaga, I'm sure I wouldn't have been in school <laughs> and be sitting here. So I'm paying it forward. Yeah. Somebody did it for me. 
it's not to, time for us to, to pay do it, it for, for artists. artists. That's yeah. that's very good. We'll, we'll be wrapping up on the conversation very soon, but I want to find out from Faltia. You have been coordinating these programs with Oxfam for a long time. What are some of the experiences, or what are some of the things that are said in the rural areas that you experience, which you feel are so harsh that, let's say, in the rural areas, we don't really see that? What are some of the things? Mm. And for the rural areas, the kind of things that happen there are so enormous. To think that um, still a lot of women and girls still don't believe in contraceptions, right? They still believe that, they still have this misconception that if they go for family planning, they might not give birth again. Yeah. They, they are likely to uh, get some diseases or some side effects <laughs> that will affect them for the rest of their lives. Yeah. So they will not even go. They prefer to get pregnant and then mm -hmm. go for unsafe abortion. Yeah. So some of these things, after the, look, the, the, the community level, we have a lot more to do. Mm -hmm. We still have the men out there in our local communities who still say that, me, I want to have 12 children. I want to have those, this number of children. Yes, in this, economic yet, in this economic conditions. And they are not even ready to cater for these children. Yeah. Even to give them three square meals is a challenge. And that is how come we have this, our young girls, adolescent girls, mm -hmm. who fall prey to this 50, uh, a pack of Indomie mm -hmm. and, and get pregnant along the line. The care, the support, this, our young girls need at the community level are simply not there. Yeah. And so they go all out to, to find those, those things for themselves, which leads them to unsafe uh, teenage pregnancy. Mm -hmm. And then that uh, also goes to um, bring about unsafe abortion. Ghana government has introduced um, re-entry re, uh, re into the uh, school system mm -hmm. when you are pregnant. Yeah. But like I said, the policies are policies, but the implementations are also another thing. Mm -hmm. If you have asked the girl to go back to school after she's pregnant, she goes back to school, and what next? What actually led the girl to become pregnant in the first place? She didn't have food to eat, and True. that is how come she, is, she went there and got pregnant. Now she has another, another mouth to feed. No psychosocial support, no economic support, nothing. And you ask the girl to go back to school. Yes, the policy is there. The girls go back to school, and they leave again. Yeah. Because the support they need, mm -hmm to be able to stay in school, it's not it's even not there. there. Yeah. The psychosocial support that would, I mean, psyche them to mm -hmm. put them into that uh, student um, position again, it's not there. Yeah. The girl is in school, she's thinking of her baby. She's thinking of how to feed. She's not even concentrating. She's not even yeah. concentrating. At the end of the day, not the, the, the stigma, not the ridicule, because those things are being catered yeah. for. But the other aspects True. of it True. are not there. So at the community level, we still have a chunk of the issues there that we need to look at. Mm -hmm. And that's also, like, like I said earlier on, it's called for a whole, a, a whole en stakeholder engagement. Yeah, yeah. The, fa the parents are supposed to be there. The children themselves, the girls are themselves, supposed to be there. Yes, yeah. they need to play their role as well. The mm -hmm. traditional lot of leaders. Yeah. A girl gets pregnant and they take the girl, uh, they all get rid and it's taken to the chief palace. At the end of the day, they say, oh, let's settle it at home. And that ends it. Hmm. As, as, a, as a country, as a nation, yeah. thriving or in a process to achieve the um, SDG Goal 5, yeah. how, how can they go about it? That will be the final. And then I'll come to Nadu to tell us, if anyone is watching us, you told us you've been a benefactor of this whole program. Mm -hmm you are also here to also help others. What are the channels that we can mm. just go through? Mm. So Fauzia will touch a bit on how, um, as a nation, we can progress to achieve the SCG uh, Goal 5. Mm. Um, like I said, for women uh, empowerment is a, uh, it's a big issue. Yeah. It is a big issue. And once we are able to, to tackle it, I think it will lead to the achievement of up to about five SDGs, yeah. not only the Google Five. Yeah. Right, so from the very beginning, like I said, from the family level, let's all of us play our role. Mm -hmm. The father is playing a role of uh, seeing the woman as a development partner. Yeah. The woman herself needs to see herself as a, as a development partner, not just a homemaker. Because we, the women ourselves, we have 
embrace mm -hmm. the, the fact that we are just homemakers. Yeah. And so we are not even making any effort to, to uh, come out of that. True. And that also contributes to what, what we go through every day. There are still so many girls who think that, oh, I'm just ready for a man to come and marry me. And what next? Mm -hmm. Once the ma man marries you to the house, you don't have any economic uh, empowerment to be able to generate some funds. Yeah. He gives you today, tomorrow. You become something else. It, he, he starts, uh, I mean, uh, molesting abusing you, you, abusing yeah. you, physically, emotionally, so everything. So right from, we, we have to start from ourselves. Yeah. The men, the women themselves, we psyche ourselves that we are not just, the woman, the woman is not just a homemaker, but a partner in development. And once we are able to achieve that, that alone can lead to so, so many things. Achieving the, achieving rest, yeah. the rest of the uh, goals. goals. Yeah. Because at the family level, the girl will give equal opportunity as the boy. Yeah. And that will lead them into going, get, get, uh, getting further into their educational system or even learning a trade. And once economically a woman is empowered, all other is will we'll fall into place. Will fall into place. Yeah. Goal, goal one will fall into place. Mm -hmm. Goal three will fall into place, which is health, achieving universal health yeah. uh, care. Goal four, Will ed universal education yeah. uh, will, will also come. Then gender equality, goal five. five. Then yeah. goal ten, in equality. Right. So this, all these agencies, these five agencies I've just talked about, if I'm able to tackle it at the family level, at the community level, on all, then all this um, will be successful. Will be successful. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, do you, if anyone is watching who wants to be part, mm -hmm. who wants to help support, what are, what are the two numbers or which social media okay. and numbers they can reach you on. Okay, so uh, for PPAG, we have a contact center called the Yenkasa Contact Center. Uh, even though uh, we serve the general population, for us young people as our priority. Yeah. So you can call 0800 2020 10. It's a toll free line, MTM Vodafone and Airtel to go. Yeah. Uh, we have service providers and lay counselors at the back end. Any reproductive health issue or any form of gender based, well, we have partnership with the other stakeholders, those who and uh, social welfare that mm. we do refer. So I encourage everybody out there that whatever situation you are going through, any you know, don't sit and brood over it. Uh, you can call, you can visit any of our clinics or partner facilities all over the country for adequate support. And just to also say that. Uh, in a bid about to ensuring that we are gender equality, it's a collective effort. I like what I just said, it begins with us as women. Yeah. If anybody would change the narrative or the stereoty stereotype that work against us, it's us to take a step further. So not condone anything. Uh, it's, it's okay to be assertive when you're uncomfortable, making the person know, I didn't like what you said, without necessarily explaining your no. Mm -hmm. Uh -huh. You also, uh, as someone like more of be economically empowered in all small ways, you fold your arms that you want opportunities to come to you, may not be the so. Like I said, uh, also in your own way, empower someone, yeah. and touch someone. Yeah. Thank you very, very much. And I wish you a very successful seminar. Yeah. And we hope for the best. Mm. Whatever we've been preaching uh, for this past 10 years will be achieved. Yeah. Especially, we'll have a different conversation on the tax on the sanitary part. Yeah. yeah. They will tackle that we one. We need to mm -hmm. yes. take that luxury tax <laughs> off that thing. I tell you. Mm. I tell you. Thank you very much. Thank so, this morning, mm. as we are talking about International Women's Day, we had Miss Nedu Irajwa Adiko, who is the project officer for Planned Parenthood Association of Ghana and Fauzia Abdul Rahman, who is the project coordinator for Oxfam. Uh, he, uh, sh um, they are working on Power to Choose. Uh, she's the project coordinator, as I said. And we've, we've had a very insightful conversation. I mean, there are a lot of things that need to be done. Like she said, we need everyone on board, not necessarily only the women. Even the women need to understand the system and also get the men involved. The community is, is also important and everyone else. Thank you very, very much.